Welcome to my lab. I'm Gwendolyn. I fix its resident mad scientist. Today I'm taking this iPod, which hasn't held a charge in eight years, and I'm going to make it a new kind of monster. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fourth gen iPod, which came on the market in 2004, 12 years ago in electronic years. That's ancient. This thing is basically a mummy. <laughs> so today we're going to give it new life by replacing the battery and changing out the hard drive for an SSD. Why? Well, a solid state drive is lighter and faster and won't skip with vibration. Not to mention it's gonna work really well with our new battery by giving it extended life. I have my new heart and my beautiful brain, so let's get cracking. For this repair, you're going to need an iFixit opening pick, a spudger, a T6 Torx screwdriver, a compact flash card or a compact flash to SD adapter, and a small piece of foam or cardboard. Let's start with the battery replacement. First, we're gonna crack open the body. This is not the easiest thing to do as there are pretty substantial clips on the case. Start by inserting your opening pick into the seam between the plastic front and the metal rear panel of the iPod near the headphone jack. Once you have it inserted, slide it around the corner inserting the wide side of the pick as deep as you can and using a gentle prying motion to release the tabs along the side. Continue along the bottom and up the other side until all the clips have been released. The iPod case is now open, but don't separate the two halves just yet. There's still an orange ribbon cable connecting the headphone jack to the logic board. Open the case like a book and lay the rear panel next to the front half of the iPod. Just to be sure we don't give the iPod an unwanted shock while we work, we need to disconnect the battery. Carefully disconnect the white battery connector from the logic board, making sure to pull only the connector itself and not the cables. Now to remove the brain. Grasp the hard drive with one hand and carefully disconnect the orange ribbon cable from the hard drive using your other hand. Now onto the heart. Remove the two black T6 torque screws from the left side of the logic board. Carefully thread the battery cable around the end of the logic board. Be careful not to pull up on the logic board too much while freeing the battery cable. To remove the heart, we need to release it from the adhesive holding it in place. I suggest gentle prying with your spudger, but if it won't budge, hit it with a little heat from your eye opener. Once you have the battery out, go ahead and put the new one in, reroute the cable underneath the logic board, and screw the logic board back down. Now we're ready to install our flash storage. Plug in your compact flash card or adapter into your HD connector. You may need to trim one of the pegs off your adapter to get it to fit, and you'll notice four open pins at the end of the cable you're connecting it to. Place your small piece of foam or cardboard in between the adapter and logic board to keep everything stable and prevent it from bouncing around once you've closed it up. Plug the battery back in and get ready to test it. Put the body back together, but don't snap it closed. Now plug your iPod into your computer. iTunes should automatically open, but if it doesn't, just open it. iTunes should recognize your iPod and give you the option to restore your iPod to its original settings. Depending on which iPod you have, you may only be able to access 60 gigabytes of the 64 gigabyte card. Unfortunately, the iPod's firmware prevents it from seeing anything larger. Once the restore process is complete, your iPod will ask to be plugged into its wall charger to complete the process. Do this and check to see if it works a few minutes later. It's alive! There you have it, an upgraded monster with new parts to make it stronger and more user-friendly. Happy Halloween, fixers. Time to get back to my tunes. <laughs>